Who doesn't want to hear about a gaming convention from someone who doesn't game whatsoever? That's it. That's my intro. Hi, I'm Amanda. You're watching Swander Damage. Today we are talking about BlizzCon. Yay. This was kind of a last minute addition to the lineup. Like most of these things are because I'm ridiculous. But I received an email a good four or five days ago asking if I wanted to go to BlizzCon. And um, this is where I had to tell my therapist, uh, I think I'm a workaholic. And she said, I think we knew that already. And I said, yes, but I think it's compulsive at this point because tell me why I said yes to this when I had another event this weekend that I had already committed to. I just didn't even think to check that. I just said, absolutely. You guys have been asking me to go to BlizzCon. A few of you have. And I wasn't going to go because originally my plan was to go to BravoCon this weekend. That was my initial plan. And everything is just on the same weekend because no one values my schedule, I guess. But why would they care? Even though I signed up for early access, you know, notification, I didn't even know tickets went on sale. I never got alerted. I got nothing. And then the resale prices were insane. So BravoCon was not going to happen. Rather than be like, okay, I'm gonna get Blizzard tickets. I'm just like, I was exhausted. And I had gotten a ticket instead to Creator Fest from Patreon for 50 bucks. And I was like, okay, a one day event. I can do that. I'll give myself a low key weekend you know, and that was on Saturday. But then I got this email literally five days ago. Before we jump into BlizzCon, let me tell you first about the sponsor for today's video, Rocket Money. Have you ever downloaded an app, not really thinking much of it, but it does like one specific function that you think is very helpful. This app for me was a financial app that would send me updates on how much money was in my bank account, which when I was broke as a joke was really helpful in making sure I never got any overdraft fees. Fortunately, but also unfortunately, thanks to Rocket Money, I found that for the last five years, this app has been charging me three times a month for a service fee. Rocket Money is an all-in-one finance platform that helps you save more and spend less. This personal finance app allows you to manage subscriptions, lower bills, build a custom budget, grow your savings all in one place. And what's crazy is that they have been able to save members over $1 billion so far. Mainly because of the nature of my review content, I am using Rocket Money to make sure that I am deleting and canceling unwanted subscriptions, but also I'm using it to track my credit and help set a budget because I am really trying to save money so that I can buy myself a little house, save more and spend less, Join the 5 million members that are using Rocket Money today. Go to rocketmoney.com slash swell entertainment or click the link in the description box to get started today for free. But you can unlock even more features with premium. And thank you to Rocket Money for sponsoring this video. Love your channel. Long story short. Hi, I'm not going to call out the person's name. Uh, I work for Blizzard Entertainment. We're doing a big old gaming convention this week on Friday and Saturday at the Anaheim Convention Center. I honestly have no idea if you're interested in gaming or play any Blizzard games, but I just got an extra ticket for the convention and I literally don't have anyone to give it to because everyone I know is already going. Um, and then basically just said that uh, they could transfer the ticket to me. So I said, yes. The plan initially had been that I was gonna go to registration on Thursday, but I had just flown back from Vegas that morning. And by the time I got Hermes, got everything sorted here, drove to my dad's place in Orange County, it was about 7.30 and I did not wanna risk getting in line when instead I could go and get Indian food from a place that also closed at eight because that's the same time the registration closed for early registration on Thursday night. So the next morning I got up early and I made sure that I was at the convention center around, gosh, nine early. The doors opened at 10 apparently and then the opening ceremony started at 11. We're just trying to get to uh, registration. That's the line that I think get inside the con. It just started it 10 minutes ago. And the line's been like that since I was trying to find parking. It's at the Anaheim Convention Center, which is the same place they have VidCon. It's also where I was for Anime Impulse uh, about a month or so ago. So it's my understanding that there was two different badge types, the general admission, this one, which is what I got, and then the orange badge, which was the portal pass. So according to their website, their official BlizzCon, Blizzard website, BlizzCon, oh, Blizz, BlizzCon is from Blizzard Entertainment. Did I even say that? I'm remarkable at my job. Uh, Blizzard is a, a company that makes games. World of Warcraft, Overwatch, Diablo. BlizzCon is their convention. Uh, it's a gaming convention from a gaming company for their games. It's usually where they announce new things. I'm amazing at this. But basically for the full weekend, general admission is 300 bucks, $299. Includes access to all halls, early access to BlizzCon store on Thursday, exclusive BlizzCon in-game goodies, official BlizzCon backpack. Portal Pass is $799. All general admission items plus exclusive Portal Pass lounge, a private viewing lounge, private concessions, gameplay experiences, concierge support, Blizzard employee meet and greets, and more. Separate registration line. 
separate security line, early convention entry on Friday and Saturday lounge only. I did see a couple of portal passes. There wasn't a ton. Honestly, I can't really tell you if that's worth it or not. There was a separate portal line. It didn't really matter because there weren't enough portal pass people. They probably had four to six uh, actual booths for people to scan their badges in with, but they had another four to six of that for the portal pass people. So they just, I ended up going to a portal pass and they were like, oh, hey, they're open to go over there. So they were just trying to get the line down at a certain point, which is good. It would not be good if they had done it like TwitchCon, for example, where they had affiliate and community sections and then lines for partners. And then they just like, didn't use those for anything else. If like there weren't a ton of partners. Also, after I grabbed my bag, they gave me my bag the Blizzard backpack. Some people were complaining about these and maybe I'm just jaded because I go to so many events. I like jumped with joy when I saw this. This is a full solid tech backpack. There is an outlet charging port here. I could charge shit if I wanted to. This is deep pockets too. They're not little pockets. And then someone did tell me, it's like, well, I think they're reusing the ones from previous years because that, to my understanding, this is the first BlizzCon in person since 2019 or at least prior to lockdown. If it said 2019 on here, I'd be pissed. It doesn't, I think I'm fine with it if it's a reuse. It's, if it's good quality, keep doing it. There was a map when I got my badge, the program and map. Here is BlizzCon. <laughs> this is where the store and registration was on the upper level. So I exited out here and this is the BlizzCon arena. Everyone was like complaining. They're like, oh my gosh, we're missing the opening ceremonies right now. Like it's starting. I was walking outside. I was like, do I wanna go to opening ceremonies? I don't know. Suddenly they're like, uh, general admission. We have a little left spot of, of, of the uh, arena open. Come on in right now. We're closing the doors in a few minutes. They didn't close the door for another like 30 minutes, but that's whatever, you know? So uh, I get inside. So here's footage of that. I did not stay when it started. I was just like, oh, this is cool. I made it inside. And then I looked on here and saw that it went for about an hour and 45 minutes. And I decided that I did not want to deal with that. And so I left because I had more things to see. And I knew I only had one day. It didn't really make sense for me to spend a good chunk of that one day in that ceremony, so I left. As you can see here, all of these are connected, if you can't see, um, but these are just kind of open. You can see into the Dark Moon Fair through, you know, World of Warcraft. You can see all the way into there. However, you can only see into the Diablo uh, hall through like very skinny little cracks. Now let me say this, uh, because I've been seeing a lot of people that are like, oh my gosh, I can't believe you're at BlizzCon. Oh, you went to BlizzCon. I heard it was kind of a mess this year. <laughs> Everything I've been seeing, for people that really liked BlizzCon this year were people who have not been before. I had a good time. When I, I left when I did, because if another gamer shoved me, I was gonna lose my shit, okay? My patience is non-existent right now. The complaints that I heard were from people who have been to several BlizzCons or multiple BlizzCons prior to this one. They were not happy. Most of it was like things were just different, but then I know time has passed. It's been years. Um, the big complaint that I heard was that a lot of different types of panels, variety of panels that they previously have had, they didn't do this year because they couldn't stream it allegedly um, because digital has become such a big deal, especially in events and you know streaming those events online, those, those presentations, those panels. And so anything that they thought was not important enough for that, they just didn't do, it seems. Allegedly, I can't verify that. That was what really bothered people. But I thought this was a really cool event. I thought it was really, really cool because I talked about this with uh, TwitchCon, talked about this a little bit with VidCon. I love when a event knows the vibe of what they're trying to convey, whether it's the vibe of their attendees, the vibe of the event itself, the vibe of the game they are trying to mimic for that hall. They did such a remarkable job of decorating these halls to match the vibes of the games that they were trying to reference and to be focused upon. And I don't even play these goddamn games, okay? Like I walked into the Diablo hall and my jaw dropped. I literally, like I have like personal plans that I'm gonna replicate some of these things in my future home. This hall was so cool, it was so dark, it was moody. They had great uh, set pieces, even the signing spots for like the author signings and dev signings and all of that. Like those signing spots were themed to the hall. Like it looked so cool cool. There was smoke everywhere. It was spilling out into the main atrium for the convention center. They had an altar photo shoot. I made it look like I was being uh, sacrificed, you know, always fun and exciting. They had tattoos for free as long as you got one of the Diablo ones, I believe. Crazy. Always think that's funny. And the people got these. Like there were times where I would go over there that first day and like every single station was being used. So people got these tattoos. They had their bookstore area also themed. And uh, I have been talking about how for uh, Twitch, I want to have you guys vote on a cookbook 
for what we do cook alongs with where I like share the recipe the day before and then we all cook together and then we like compare how it looks at the end. Instead of voting, I did just buy the Diablo cookbook mainly cause it looked really good. I was like, there's only 300 of these here. I was like, Okay. Part of why I was cool with leaving the opening ceremony was that I knew there were screens in a bunch of the different halls according to the map. So their screens were everywhere in these halls. It wasn't just like, oh yeah, here's a TV screen. No, here's these massive screens where we are projecting everything, but surrounding the screens, like in the Diablo hall, they had like the tree with a bunch of severed heads hanging from it. Here's a selfie of me with one of them because I thought it looked cool. I just spent a lot of time in the Diablo hall. I was like, this is my desired aesthetic. This is, this is my Halloween. This is fun. So then the next hall is the Overwatch hall for Overwatch World Cup. So they had a massive arena demo set up basically where they were doing Overwatch. I caught a little bit of Team USA playing Team China. They were losing when I saw them. And then later I ended up meeting Ultraviolet, I believe, um, and his girlfriend, because his girlfriend's a fan of mine, which is very sweet. And she was very excited to share with me. Um, she's a K-pop fan apparently. And so she made them cards like the K-pop groups do. So she gave me three of these and I get to open them up. <laughs> I said I would open them up for you guys. So Made in USA, Overwatch World Cup 2023 Team USA. <laughs> Should I just open them all? Hold on. William, don't you love the things you get to edit? <laughs> They're all holding the American flag over their shoulder. <laughs> I'm sorry. These go kind of hard. That's kind of fun. So there's all the players that I got. Apparently there was drama where, or something. I don't know. Nor was that Team Canada. I don't know. That was that main hall. They also had a bunch of the lines for the uh, meet and greets where you can meet all the players for the different teams. They had also an influencer meet and greet section. Now, what I thought was odd about this was on the schedule, okay, for author meet and greets, dev meet and greets, things like that, it had names, author signings, Christy Golden, Dave Greco, developer signings where it's just the developers of the game. Obviously those are all the same people, that makes sense. Influencer meet and greet hall B, which is the Overwatch World Cup hall. It would just have the different games that they played. So like Overwatch, Hearthstone, World of Warcraft, Diablo, World of Warcraft, Um. Do you just go to that and just hope that you see someone that you like? Is that how that works? What if I don't like that influencer for that particular game? Unless it's like, it's somewhere else and I just haven't been able to find it. Cause that, it, I thought that that was odd. Then we have Overwatch 2 hall, massive demo area, massive demo area. And it looked really cool. They had a comm tower, okay, here as well that had a bunch of like full size figures of uh, the different characters. Don't ask me questions about that. Uh, it's, I'm not trying to be a fake gamer girl. I don't know. Aside from demos, there wasn't a ton to do. That was the complaint I was hearing the most from people who both new attendees and old attendees. I don't know what else you would add. It's a gaming convention. Of course, the draw is gaming. I will say maybe they were in their civvy clothes. Okay. But I always question conventions that have zero furries in attendance. I always see at least one and then I'm like, okay, cool. We're good. I've seen one. There was none that I could discernibly make out. Okay. And then I saw cosplayers and I will say there wasn't a ton of cosplayers. I would say there was a good number, but not like a ton that I would associate with an event like this. But like all the cosplays that I saw were very intricate, very detailed, not a ton of beginner pieces. I would say that I, I would, I would be used to seeing at an event like this when there's a variety of cosplays, food and drink spots everywhere. Um, out in the plaza between the hotels where they normally are was a bunch of food trucks. They also had, uh, Culture City had a, a sensory truck. There was a thing advertised on there and I was like, what is a sensory truck? And I just thought it was a gaming thing that I didn't understand. No, Culture City for all abilities and all angels, sensory inclusive bag. Uh, basically they were a truck where it's like, if you were feeling overwhelmed or anything, whether you have any form of like neurodivergent requirements or what have you that would make conventions, you know, too much. I don't talk about it much, but I do get overstimulated at these things uh, because of my anxiety. So I was like, oh, that's really cool. They gave me a bag <laughs> because of my anxiety. And in here, noise canceling headphones, um, a card if you go nonverbal and what you need from them, some fidget toys, which is just really nice. And this was free. They gave this to me. That was very nice. I was like, yeah, I made severe anxiety. So that was very nice of them. They let me go in the truck a little bit. So here's a little clip of that. And it was quiet in there. I heard literally nothing from the outside. So that's pretty solid. I think that's great. And people complain about things like that. It's like, oh, well then don't go to a convention. Everyone should be able to go to a convention and enjoy and be a part of 
you know, an in-person event for something they are a fan of. And if you have a problem with that, then you're a little bitch. Past the World of Warcraft hall was the Dark Moon Fair, and they had a big eye over there that would blink on occasion that I didn't catch on camera blinking, which drove me nuts. Basically, Ethereal Trading Emporium, Capsule Toy Depot, and then you could purchase pins and then toys and things. And then there was trading. And then people were set up with at the tables all over the place, like open for pin trading and things like that. The lines were a little, a lot. I don't know how you fix that for this area though. Cause then the, the answer would be to expand that, but then you're running into the, the rumble mania and demo areas for Warcraft rumble and world of Warcraft. So I don't know how, if you expand it. I think when you have a line this bad on day one, as well as the parking lots being closed that early, I think you have to start thinking that maybe you've overgrown a place, which I get it first year back. You don't know what you've overgrown. And the arena being attached to this convention center is what's the drawing point for the Anaheim Convention Center for a lot of people. I think you may have to acknowledge that you overgrew things and that it's time to find a bigger convention. Now, obviously that would take it out of Anaheim. And I know that that bugs people, but I don't know if you could do it again here. A complaint I did hear a lot was not enough chairs and seating areas. There were quite a few sprinkled around to the point that I thought that that was very good. And then obviously the gameplay spaces, they have seats available. Um, I do think there needed to be more available, especially in the outdoor areas for the food and you have food areas all over the place. I do think there's more space for chairs. Um, I, in the Warcraft from both to the Darkman Fair, they had these tree things that were like pretty sturdy. I was sitting on one of those for a while. That was fine. Side note, in the Warcraft Rumble demo area, they had these rocks slash tree things that looked very nice and I wanna make one for my apartment. So anyone who knows how to make that, please let me know so I can build one. But they had like little bench ones and then actual tree ones, but I want a bench one. Like picture that back here. I have just like a bench that's, a, that's like a plant, like a bush that I can sit on. That would be really cool. The lines got crazy throughout the day, the more people they let in. So that's where I think it was just like, I, I left when I left and I wasn't gonna stick around for much more on Friday. I could have gone till the end. I decided not to, cause I did end up having to drive back so I could do my event the next day. As far as more to do, I don't know. What else could you have to do with something here? Okay, I pitch you gaming in real life. Now I know that sounds stupid, but basically like an obstacle course style of things. Would you do that? I don't know. I'm not familiar with these games, so I don't know what, if I'm pitching anything fucking good. But I don't know. I was seeing a lot of like the demos for Diablo. There was a lot of like uh, crazy movements and uh, uh, characters, you know, could you have like, you know, like, oh, do you match your gamer type? I don't know. What am I, am I pitching good things? I have no idea. More themed activities type of thing versus just like gameplay, which I know that's what this is and you're pitching games all in all. I, I can't complain about a ton. More to do is always good. Um, I do think that you could do, you know, I don't know. I think obstacle courses, like themed obstacle courses for each one would be cool or like themed more activities. I think it's pretty solid. I know some people are gonna be mad, but like comparatively to what I, not nothing, the details for the different halls was really cool. And something as simple as adding like, in one of the halls they had for the fire extinguisher pillars or what have you, they had decorated them with the colors of the game for the stripes, just something little, you know, having just like metal containers out for like, oh yeah, these are like the storage containers type of things. Like it's, it's just cool little details like that. In the other halls, they just covered those pillars with like black curtains and things like that. And that just worked, worked really well. I think it was really cool. There's the little attention to detail and I get it when it's not something like a big convention, but instead you're like literally trying to like match a game's vibe. That's a little easier to go off of, but the amount of details they put in could not be minimized. That was insane. I'm hung up on that because that was just really cool. I did go check out the BlizzCon store because my friend wanted me to check something out for her for Overwatch. They did not have anything for what she wanted. So that was a bummer. I did hear some people where it's like, oh yeah, no, this is cool. This art is cool, but they have this every year at a certain point you get used to it, which like the same thing. It's like, for me, it's new for them. It's old. And then some people were noting that they wish that they would have announced like con specific merch there, which doesn't sound like there was anything based on what I could hear. I would not know because I'm not exactly, you know, crawl crawling the blizzard store on a normal basis. All in all, not so bummed that I missed Saturday. I think I got what I needed to out of, 
uh, Friday, but keep that in mind. Anything that happened Saturday, I was not there for, so keep that in mind for this review. As far as the cost for the event, two full days of the event, potentially, you know, a good portion of three if you get the early registration. I wouldn't go any higher on the price. I would keep the price where it is. Uh, as far as portal pass, I really can't tell you if that is uh, valid or not. The portal pass here on the lounge for up here, it says remote viewing area, bag check-in, guest services, demo area, food options there as well, drinks options as well. So I mean that extra second space to go and hang out and eat and things like that is probably good. It seems like there was a lot, but it does like comparatively, there was way less portal passes than there were to general admission, obviously. So I think that might be worth it if you just want the separate cost, but I don't know if it's worth $800, frankly. I don't know if it's worth that. Thank you for having me. Sorry if I'm a goblin and I only went to one day because I overbooked myself because I don't know how to say no to things. Did you go to BlizzCon? Did you hear that I was at BlizzCon? Are you mad I only went to one day of BlizzCon? Are you mad I was invited at all when I don't game and I'm just a goblin who goes to random events and is annoying on purpose. Let me know, comment down below. Reminder that I have a podcast, the Small Entertainment Podcast. Reminder that Small Entertainment is now available on Spotify. Reminder that I stream on Twitch now and we will be streaming some recipes from this in the next coming months. Shout out to my patrons. Thank you so much for supporting on Patreon. If you'd also explore my Patreon, love those down below. Like to follow me on social media, that'll be all up here. And that's me and have all the day. Goodbye. There's a section of people that see me at events and just forget what I do for a living because they always get so excited because they're like, oh my God, I didn't realize you game. And then I have to go like, no, I don't. I'm just here to review the event. I'm just here to be annoying. Thank you, Abby, Adira, Amy, Andrew, Angel, Aslan, Cameron, Corey, Donnie, Elliot, Glenn, Goth, Jasmine, Kenny, Lauren, Literal, Madeline, Mae West, Medic, Micah, Michael, Nathan, Palace, Pink, Cordy, Rachel, Randy, Robert, Rosie, Ryan, Sam, Skylar, Tasha, Tenzin, Thomas, Heavenly, Victor, Winter, Zwink.